NFL kickoff is right here, so let's do some week one rankings. Do our wide receiver, starting off with Tyree Kill at the one. Now, I have Lamb over him for my rest of season rankings, but I do want to make some small changes just based on the over-unders and the big significant changes from week one. Now, the Dolphins play the Jaguars, 50.5 over-under versus the Cowboys. I will throw Lamb up there in tier one as well. But the Cowboys play the Browns with the 42 point over under, so pretty big difference. And the issue with Tyreek is more the age. So Lamb was holding out. I don't think it's going to be too big of an issue, but he's the younger player. I don't think that's going to really matter as much for early on the year. That's going to be more so a late season end of playoff upside thing. Now, Jamar Chase is also going to be in tier two because he doesn't have a great matchup either. Playing the Patriots, 40.5 over under, not a great game environment, and I'm going to throw him in tier two with Amon Ra and Justin Jefferson. Amon Ra actually has a pretty good matchup playing the Rams, 49 point over under, 49 and a half point over under, which I believe has now been bumped to 50.5. One of the higher scoring games this week, I just don't know if he has the same ceiling as Chase, even in a high scoring matchup for him and a low scoring matchup for Chase. Jefferson, mediocre matchup, but I don't think that we can move him much lower than this because he's shown he's quarterback proof in the past. He is the best receiver in the NFL from a pure talent standpoint, so it would feel disrespectful to move him lower than five. At six though, we are gonna have Puka Nakua in that same tier seven, Garrett Wilson, eight AJ Brown, nine Marvin Harrison, and 10 Drake London. With Puka Nakua, good matchup, and I just really love the kid. Again, we have Lions versus Rams, which has now been, depending on what sportsbook you're looking at, it's either 50.5 or some sportsbooks are even putting it 51.5. Again, going to be a shootout, so want some players in that game. And I'm just betting on the second year player that just had one of the best rookie seasons of all time. Let's not overthink it. Let's not get cute for week one. Puka Nakua is going to be a stud. Garrett Wilson, you have some questions. Mediocre matchup doesn't really stack up on the high or low end of the spectrum. AJ Brown, more of a boring option. We know what we're going to get. He definitely does have some boom bust potential on a week to week basis, I will say. But if you have him, you're starting him as a top 10 receiver. Now, Marv and Drake London are going to be the kind of question marks per se. With Marv, I really do believe that he is going to be a locked and loaded receiver one from the jump, just based on the investment the Cardinals made in him, based on the kind of prospect he is, and based on the fact that they don't really have anyone else at receiver. So expecting him to be pro ready week one, dominate, his upside is right up there with Puka, Garrett Wilson, AJ Brown. So I feel like he belongs in this tier, even if he is at the bottom of it. Same thing for Drake London. London, he has proven that he's efficient, but he hasn't actually really been any more fantasy relevant than Marvin Harrison. They both have a ton of questions in that proven production standpoint. Again, I feel good about the Falcons offense. I feel good about the only target competition he has out of the receiving group is Kyle Pitts. So I can project his week one role pretty solid. Again, Nothing super notable, so we're not going to talk about those mediocre matchups for guys that we know we're starting if we drafted him with London, early second, early third round draft capital, depending on your league format. I do want to take a quick pause here to tell you how you can find our top 48 running back rankings, or mine specific, same thing for receivers. Head over to ffshareingroom.com, click on the premium tab, and that will give you a 30-day free trial You'll be able to access all my in-season ranking content if you want your team graded. I'll be doing that as well. A ton of personalized advice. Anything you need, you drafted, you want to draft, you need advice, you need help, hit me up on Instagram at fantasytradingroom.com and that I'm going to be able to give you personalized advice all season if you are a pro member. And you can sign up to do so for completely free right now. That said, let's get back to the rankings. Now we're going to go to 11 with Devontae Adams. And he's a guy that just soaks up targets, was still super efficient last year, even though he's older. But we are going to have these older guys 
pushed up just a little bit more at the beginning of the season because you're worried about the injury, you're worried about them falling off, and that's not really going to be as big of a deal, especially in week one. So we're going to have Devontae there, but we're also going to put Debo at 12, Mike Evans at 13, Jalen Waddle at 14. So same tier of guys. Debo Samuel, you have IU coming back, but he hasn't practiced with the team. So I'm expecting Debo to be the feature guy for a, if not only this week, for a quite a few weeks as opposed to Ayuk. And people are just kind of starting to realize that, oh yeah, Debo had 21 points per game a few years ago, 16 points per game last year, and they're using him like a running back. So he could be a fantasy cheat code like he was in 2021, scoring 21 points per game. The also other side of the coin with that is Christian McCaffrey had that calf injury. They're paying Debo to run the football. So I don't see why the offense wouldn't just kind of run more through Debo a little bit, give him some more touches, and, you know, kind of be like, you know, let's let CMC not rest, but let's limit it a little bit. Let's save him for the playoffs, and let's use Debo because we're paying him money to play that position anyway. And he could have a monster fantasy season if that is the case. Now, the Bucks. Little questions at OC because Dave Canales left, but pretty similar situation. The man is older, but again, I'm fine with that for week one. He's just a walking 1,000 yard receiver every single year, and he has a ton of upside being the big X receiver, big play threat that he is. Same thing for Waddle, has a ton of upside. I talked about earlier. Love the Dolphins Jags matchup. One of the sports books has him at 50.5 over under, so. I want players in that type of environment. Now, we are going to have 15 be Nico Collins, 16 Brandon Ayuk, and 17 Chris Olave. I want to put Neighbors here. I'll touch on him in a second. I just don't think that he is ready quite yet. With Nico Collins, the Texans, just an offense that I would really love to get some more of. With Brandon Ayuk, I still think he's a great talent. I don't think that... The him missing practice is going to be the end of the world. He's a mid wide receiver too. We know how good he is. We know his upside. We know the 49ers. So again, not a super big deal. And then Chris Olave is going to be our wide receiver to round out this tier. Again, just so many questions about Derek Carr. Not a super Bowl, super notable matchup for any of these guys in this tier. But at 18, we're going to have Malik Neighbors. 19, we're going to have DJ Moore. 20 Cooper Cup, 21 Michael Pittman, 22 Stefan Diggs, 23 Zay Flowers, and 24 Tank Dell. Big tier of guys. This could really go any way. Not a lot of them have super great or important matchups besides Cooper Cup, and that's kind of why I have him over some guys like Michael Pittman, Zay Flowers, Stefan Diggs. But starting off with neighbors, I would probably like to put him next to Olave if I just felt a little bit better about the Giants. But week one, it's not so much that I'm concerned about neighbors. I'm just concerned about what the offense is going to look like. And if I don't have to start him or rank him super, super high, I don't know. I just don't feel as comfortable projecting him out for Nico Collins, Ayuk, Olave numbers week one when we haven't really had a sample size to go off of yet. DJ Moore, the Bears, Caleb Williams is going to come out firing. I really even feel good about him as a starting quarterback. Obviously, I am a Bears fan, but DJ Moore was just so amazing last year. Romo Dunze will take a little longer to come on. Keenan Allen should be solid, but it'll probably be the DJ Moore and Keenan Allen show, at least for week one. Cooper Cup seems fully healthy. Again, older receiver. Worried a little bit about the late season production. I don't think he's going to take away from Nakua. I actually did a whole film study on Nakua for fantasy football. If you want to check that out, go over to fantasytradingroom.com or Fantasy Trading Room on YouTube and watch that video. But they play very complimentary to each other, and it's a great matchup. Again, I talked about it. Lions Rams probably going to be the highest scoring game of the week. So give me pieces of that all day. You have Michael Pittman and. He's a guy I'm a little concerned about because Anthony Richardson, we don't know what we're going to get. But that being said, 
He's the alpha. They are going to manufacture him targets. It's going to be a solid matchup. Not a good or bad uh, over-under for the week. But Stephon Diggs, I think he's going to start as the Texan wide receiver too. I'm not sure he's going to finish the year. Again, age coming into play. Zay Flower on the Ravens. I think that he has probably the upside to have a big week and pass guys like Diggs, Pittman, Coop, Cooper Cup. But at the same time, he's playing next to Lamar Jackson, who is a great real-life quarterback. I'm just a little worried about the fact that he hasn't really supported a 1,000-yard receiver since Hollywood Brown. Mark Andrews is fully healthy. How's this offense going to be run? I have some questions there. Tank Dell is going to be 24. I just really want pieces of this Texans offense. And I think there's a chance that I, he outproduces Diggs in week one. I'm not saying it's a high chance, but I just don't really feel comfortable ranking any of these other guys over Tank Dell due to the upside, due to the fact that he had 15 points per game as a rookie. So I kind of feel like I have to sneak him in there, but I could definitely see myself going a ton of other options at 24. Dell is just kind of the high ceiling play more so. Moving on to the running backs, CMC has to be in his own tier. Bijan and Brees have to be in tier two. I don't really think there's too much debating that. Even though Jameer Gibbs has a good matchup, Lions Rams, like we talked about, super high scoring game. I just don't know if I can put him in that same tier because you're a little worried about Dave Montgomery and what kind of role he's going to have. I don't know if I can have Gibbs in the same tier as JT and Saquon. You know, we're going to put Gibbs in the same tier because of the good matchup. We're going to have him at four. Then we'll drop down and we'll put Jonathan Taylor, Saquon Barkley, Kyron Williams, Travis Etienne, Derrick Henry, and Isaiah Pacheco. Big tier of guys. Jonathan Taylor's a guy that I do really like, but I don't think it's a lock that he's going to come out there and be head and shoulders above Kyron, above Etienne. You have a little bit of question with Anthony Richardson, and I still actually don't think that's really going to affect him. I think it is going to take away some of his touchdown upside, but also make him more efficient. Overall, I like it. The Eagles don't really have a super notable matchup this week either. They play the Packers, which is 48 and a half. It is a good over-under. It's going to be a high-scoring game, but it's not like it's going to be one of the you know top three, top four. I don't even think it's top five at the moment. Still, I think Saquon's a great player, but I have a lot of questions about how the targets are going to be distributed. You have A.J. Brown. You have Devonta Smith, you have even Dallas Goddard, kind of Jahan Dotson. So Jalen Hurts isn't also going to dump the ball off immediately if he's under pressure. Those are my kind of concerns of week one. I'm a little worried about Saquon, and I think he's going to be a great player for the Eagles, but he was really only super, super dominant with the Giants when he was getting a 140, 120 targets because of all those dump offs with Eli Manning and company. So again, he's a great player, but I don't know if he is in that Jameer Gibbs tier just yet. Then we have Kyron Williams, great matchup. ETN, also a great matchup. Derrick Henry, I feel like that he doesn't deserve to be put with the guys I'm gonna have below, but I also don't think that he is, you know, above ETN or Kyron Williams. So end of this tier for me, it would be kind of like a mini tier break. Same thing with A-Chain. The Dolphins have a super high scoring game though. So I wouldn't be surprised to see A-Chain come out and light the NFL on fire when they're playing the Jaguars. But at the same time, there's definitely a ton of risk there. We don't know his usage quite yet. I think the upside and ceiling case, especially with a good matchup, just makes it so if I'm high in him already, I don't think I can drop him lower than this tier. Again, if you really want to argue, I'd kind of put like a mini tier behind ETN and then Henry just because I don't know if those guys are quite on the same level and ETN and Kyron have pretty solid matchups. But ETN, I'm just going to shoot for it here. He is going to be in that tier three as my running back 10. Let's drop down to 11 where we're going to have Pacheco and White. And let's talk the signing of Samaze Pirine. 
I don't think that it really matters. It's a little annoying, but the difference is Samaj P. Ryan couldn't be the four string running back for the Broncos. He wasn't beating out Audric Estime. So I think that tells you all you need to know about him talent wise. Jared McKinnon was still a pretty good scat back. It's not like he was an elite talent, of course, and was annoying. But I think that the Chiefs going out there and signing Samaj P. Ryan is just a move telling us that the other running backs they had were just so garbage. And I never thought Pacheco was going to catch 70, 80 balls. I really do like him, but I like the offense more. Just a little bit of questions about the fact that they throw the ball a ton in the 5, 10 yard line. They are going to throw the ball a ton overall. Pacheco had a big step up, but he still never had that 60, 70 target season yet. So, and never, he's never truly been a elite pass catcher. I still think he's a good player, but 11 seems more than fair to me. Rashad White, I really like him again. If he can just get a little bit more efficient, he'll be golden. He had 70 targets last year. Expect that to continue. He's going to have a big role as the receiving back. I think the Bucks have a solid offense and team once again. So not really too much to talk about, too much to worry about there. Bucky Irving isn't really going to be a big factor. This regime doesn't like small backs, so I'm not sure why they drafted him. He's not a actual great pass catcher for how small he is. He's not a great runner. He's kind of just, just a guy. He's just there. So third team, we're going to have James Cook. Fourth team, we're going to have Josh Jacobs. 15, we're going to have Kenneth Walker. And 16, we are going to have Joe Mixon. I am going to put Kamara here just for now at 17. And yeah, I think that's where the tier ends for me. James Cook, you know, just the Bills offense. He was very good down the end of the stretch. And he's a young running back. So I feel good about him there. I think that he is a little bit behind White. Not a super notable matchup. They've played the Cardinals. Decent over under 48.5. Kind of these lines will probably move a little bit by the time you're seeing this, but it's near the top, but still not like Lions, Rams, Dolphins, Jags, and even Colts, Texans is kind of starting to creep up near the top as well. I know I said that it wasn't a super notable matchup before with the receivers, but it seems like it kind of is the more that I'm looking at other sports books. I may have just been looking at one early on. Josh Jacobs at 14, and he's a guy that I'm just not super in on. I think that he has a ton of tread on his tires. Even though he's not the oldest back, I don't. I think that a lot of his efficiency was his own fault and was the fact that he just got ran into the ground in Las Vegas. I think the Packers do have a very good offense, which is kind of why I'm ranking him this high. I'm just not really bought into the talent itself. Kenneth Walker has been receiving a ton of hype actually around the passing game by his OC, by the offense. So Zach Charbonnet looks like he's going to be more of a handcuff than anything. And that really helps out Kenneth Walker a ton. Again, we don't really have any data to actually back that up yet, but I still feel good about him. And he's a very explosive runner and can really hit the home run. So Having him here in this tier makes a ton of sense. Joe Mixon, again, higher scoring game actually when you average out the total over-unders. Again, it does look like a lot of books have it at 49.5. To round up this tier though, we are going to talk about Elvin Kamara. Not a super notable matchup as well, but Kendra Miller is not going to be a factor in week one. He's on the IR. Are they going with Jamal Williams? Are they going with Taysom Hill? I think they're just going to go and feed Kamara until they can figure it out, which in a PPR league should be very advantageous to him. The issue I have with Kamara is he's very old. Derek Carr was actually dealing with a shoulder injury last year, so I think that limited his ability to push the ball downfield. I don't think there are going to be nearly as many checkdowns and new offensive coordinator as well, so we'll see how the scheme looks. We'll see if they are willing to throw the ball down the field more often. Now, we are going to drop down to our last tier. Ramondre at 18, Aaron Jones at 19, James Conner at 20, Swift at 21, Tony Pollard at 22, Samir White at 23, and Montgomery at 24. Ramondre Stevenson just got paid this offseason. The Patriots don't really have anything else 
but to run their offense through Ramondre. Jacoby Brissett isn't a good quarterback, but he's been solid. I don't really know what else to think. I just really like Ramondre as a talent. It is going to be a low scoring game, so maybe that will actually help him out a little bit just based on the how the game script's going to run. A lot of runs, but we'll see. It's not a very good situation, and I'm just betting more on the talent here. Aaron Jones, I really don't know if we're going to get playoff Aaron Jones or we're going to get very washed, injured, banged up Aaron Jones in week one. Again, tough to tell, especially with J.J. McCarthy going down. They are forced to start Sam Darnold, who isn't a great quarterback. Obviously, you don't need me to say that. T.J. Hawkins is not going to be there. A lot of questions about the offense and just him in general as an older back. But James Conner is going to be next up on the list. I actually really like James Conner early on in the year. I think that he's going to have a hot start. It's just the fact that he has missed a ton of games in his NFL career. You have Trey Benson. And once Trey Benson gets on the field, I'm not sure that he's going to give that job up. Especially if James Conner goes down this year in when he's really aging out. I don't know if he's really ever going to be the same, which as sad as it is to hear is probably the truth, especially when you have a new young explosive running back. They drafted Benson in the third round for a reason. Week one, though, it shouldn't really matter. Cardinals, not super important matchup either. I believe they are playing the Bills, 48.5. So solid over-under, should be a decently high-scoring game. Not, you know, the top one either, though. DeAndre Swift, I'm actually higher on him than mo most I've come to realize. And I just think that he has a ton of upside to offer in the pass catching game. We saw they ran a few screen trim in the preseason. And it should be just a great offense. The Bears take on the Titans, 45 and a half over under. So not a great, you know, overall matchup either. But Tony Powers, our next guy, again, same matchup. It seems like he's going to be the guy versus. Tajay Spears, and it's going to be close to a split, but Pollard, they paid the money to, and the reason why I like Pollard, let me kind of just explain this real quick. Pollard had the best season of his career playing alongside Ezekiel Elliott. He wins through efficiency, so it really doesn't matter if he's not getting every touch. He's going to win through being an explosive running back, and having him in the situation gives him the opportunity and the upside to do so. It really comes down if the Titans are going to be the offense that people are projecting them out to be. If you have superstar Will Levis or if everything kind of falls down, Tony Pollard's not going to be great. But there's a ton of upside with him. I think there's a good amount of upside with the Titans. So overall, I like him as a low-end running back too this year. Then Zemir White, don't think he's a great talent. Again, not a great matchup. Just kind of a boring pick, but he is going to be the RB1, at least as we know. Going to be the workhorse on a team that doesn't really have any great quarterback play, so I imagine they will run the ball. Dave Montgomery, last, is going to be here. And it's just really, I don't like him this year. The other running backs behind him, I just don't know who else to put. The Lions have a good matchup against the Rams. You know, I mentioned that with Jameer Gibbs. And he does have touchdown upside if he is going to get involved more. I'd imagine it to be the start of the year. And then kind of, you know, let Gibbs, as he he's had a full season under his belt, but even give him a few more games or even, you know, three, four weeks to really, really completely take over every single high value touch in that backfield. But if you guys enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you guys think. I'll be doing this every single week during the season, so get excited for that. Drop a comment, drop a like, and I'll see you guys in the next one.